welcome to PA Harness Week. I'm Charlotte McBride here at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. While Heather and Steve are back up at Chester, I got a break to go a little north for the week to interview some new drivers, some new trainers, some new owners, and get you the best of the best from here at the Poconos and everywhere in between. It's all coming up right now on Racing's Fastest Paced Half Hour. Coming up, we'll introduce you to driver Brandon Simpson. What's his story? And the Levy final from Yonkers. We've got those highlights later. Could foiled again get the job done? As always, we'll give you the best of the best from Chester and here in the Poconos. The hottest horse casters on the tube are bringing you all of the hottest racing right now, beginning on Comcast Sportsnet. Oh, they go. Explosive matter wins the Colonial easily. Underway. and welcome to PA Harness Week. I'm Steve Ross. And I'm Heather Moffat. And we're here at beautiful Harris Chester. Well, wait, wait, wait. It's Harris, Philadelphia now. We leave here one week to change the name. Is that yeah. what it is? I guess All so. Right. It's Harris, Philadelphia. Now, you know I'm an old guy and old, old guys get confused. But what I'm not going to get confused about is the fact that today, you know what today is? The first Saturday in May, which means it is the... Kentucky Derby. Correct, Mundo. Now, if you're thinking about getting down on the Derby, and then again, who isn't? Because a lot of people bet the Derby or the Triple Crown or the Breeders' Crown, whatever, and they do this one day a year. So if you're thinking about doing that, there's only one place to, well, there's actually two places for you to go. Harris, Chester slash Philadelphia, or Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. The, the idea is come on out here, it'll be terrific, okay? Special race day today at Harris, Philadelphia. We usually don't race today on Saturdays. That's true. But we are today, so get out here and bet the Derby. And also, there is a double header at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs today. Oh the first God. card started at 11 a.m., mm -hmm. and then after that, um, they're going to take a little break for the Derby. After the Derby, a second card starts at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. All kinds of activities. They got a really cool, like, um, beautiful hat contest. Nice. Or, um, super cool, funky hat contest, whatever. Super cool, funky hat <laughs> contest. And later on in the show, Charlotte catches up with Jen Starr from We Get Sun of Pocono Downs to tell you all about the promotions going on today, the first Saturday in May, Kentucky Derby Day. Let's get to the action, okay? Let's talk about what happened here back when this racetrack was not Harris, Philadelphia. It was Harris Chester. And that's it was true. it was a featured trot, wasn't it? On believe it was Friday, correct? It was Friday, that's true. Um first, thirty-five thousand dollars. It was a featured trot of the week. Number seven is big rigs. He's a favorite in here. This is his third start of the year. Last year, you might remember, he was one of the top names in the sophomore trotting uh, division there. The eight is winning Mr. He's had eight wins out of ten starts so far this year in open competition, I might add. And then number four is Lolique. Uh, I love that. It just rolled Lolique. off the bat. Lolique has competed recently at Pocono, and he returns to Chester now. The half mile, 56 and four-fifths seconds. They've got three-eighths to go, and winning Mr. to catch, he's a length and a half in front. And he's perfect, and Big Riggs are a joint second, and he's perfect with the tougher trip of the two. Big Riggs has tracked winning Mr.'s every step from the pocket. Equity's locked in while 4-3 from the lead. Low Leak's leveling off behind stale cover. He'll have to move three wide on the far turn, and he's moving right now. Take my picture and don't know Chip are five from the front. A two off last is Taggy Red Hanover. Three quarters in one, 24 and three and the field turns for home how much more does winning mr have big rigs angles wide to test him in the final 150 yards winning mr all out big rigs trying to chase him down winning mr digging in big rigs one last lunch photo this horse is crazy good right now from post state georgie knapp just sends winning mr down the highway they went in 153 it was really close though Big Riggs, he got a perfect trip, just a neck back. Equity was the one who picked up third. Okay, let's stay right here for the very next race at Harris, Philadelphia. No, 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 no. Still Harris Chester last Friday, remember? Are you just doing this? You having fun with this? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next race. 
Fridays at Harris, race 12. West Renan winners the 13,000 in the last five starts. 17,000 bucks is what the jackpot was they were going for. And number six, Custer the Dragon, who missed by a head last week with Montreal Teague, was the four to five chalk. Number seven, Willie Boots, was three to one with Georgie Knapp. Number four on the radar with Ron Pierce, was seven to two with the call. Here's our guy, James. Up the back stretch, Custard the Dragon now has to deal with Willie Boots. Willie Boots is pressed to within a neck of the lead. Willie Boots sticks those purple blinkers just in front with five sixteenths to go. Custard the Dragon's now a length in arrears, chased after some to try to keep position at the inside, and Willie Boots could not clear. On the radar was towed up a length and a half off the leaders, loaded up in truck and's got two and a half to make up. He'll have room up the inside. Winsmith Sid is circling wide from Buckeye in charge. They're five lengths off the leaders. Then Avogadro Hanover and Idealist dropped out last and Custard the Dragon. Emboldened by the challenge of Willie Boots has kicked clear by two and a half. A sixteenth to go. Custard the Dragon's in hand. Custard the Dragon got parked to the quarter on a 27 and 2 split before clearing and cruising on to win in 150 and 3. He still got the goods. Willie Boots uh, rode up and took a kick at Custer at the three quarters before Custer got in his licks and swallowed him and swatted him like a fly. Number two loaded up and trucking off at 9 to 1 with Tim Teacher got third. And when we come back, don't you dare go away. We'll have more action from Mohegan Sun and Pocono Downs, and you'll meet driver Brandon Simpson. Don't go away. Why do so many winners travel in EB trailers? They love the ride. EB Paysetter Trailers deliver your horses in peak condition, ready to race every time. Designed to provide safe and comfortable transport for standard bred racehorses, EB's Paysetter Series Trailers are the preferred choice of professional standard bred trainers and breeders nationwide. All EB Paysetter models feature custom standard bred options. And excellent airflow and aligned interior ceiling to keep your horses fresh and comfortable. Every EB trailer has commercial quality componentry and riveted sidewall construction engineered and designed to stand up to constant and rigorous horse and road use. And a sleek aerodynamic nose design that also delivers improved fuel savings. More winners ride with EB than any other trailer. EB, setting the pace in standard red horse transportation. Mohegan Sun, Off-Track Wagering, Allentown, Carbondale, East Stroudsburg. Always leave happy. Hi, and welcome back to PA Harness Week along with Heather Moffitt. That would be her. I'm Steve Ross. That would be me. And as we told you in the beginning of the show, it's a big day, the first Saturday in May. And up at Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs, they got so much going on. As you mentioned, it was a double header. And they're, they're, one of their big guns up there, Jen Starr, will tell you all about what's going to happen today at Mohegan Sun. Well, we're here at the Pacers Clubhouse at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. Joining me is Jen Starr, the racing marketing manager here at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. A lot of exciting things going on this summer here. What are some things that racing fans can look forward to? We're really excited about Kentucky Derby Day, Saturday, mm -hmm. May 5th, because it's our first ever double header of live racing. First post time, 11 a.m., we have 10 live races. And then for the rest of the day, we've got the Run for the Roses hat review, where ladies could make their fabulous hats and come out. And then we have a second live card immediately following the Derby. We have a champagne brunch in Pacers Clubhouse. It will just be fun from 9 o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night. So Derby Day we know is going to be fabulous here. What are some other great events here this summer after that? 
We're really looking forward to the second Earl Beale Jr. Memorial Trot on Saturday, June 23rd. That will be a huge race. The best horses from North America will be competing here for a purse of $500,000. And then Saturday, June 30th is our first Sun Stake Saturday featuring the Ben Franklin Free for All Pace, the Max Hemp Memorial, and the James Lynch Memorial. A huge night, over $1.6 million in purses total. So this summer is going to be fabulous here at Pocono Downs, and we hope a lot of people come out. And I know that we'll be here a lot, and we'll show you all those races and all of those highlights continuously on PA Harness Week. But for now, we'll send it back to you guys. Thank you so much, Charla and Jen. Big doings going on at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs, and also here at Harris. You fill in the blank, okay? Today, now it's Harris, Philadelphia. Now it is. Yes. Not Harris Chester. Ah. All right, next race at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs. It was a condition pace for high class horse flesh. It was for winners over $25,000 lifetime with 25 dimes in the line. Number one, Rockin' Cam with Dave Miller was the three to five chalk. Number six, Foreclosure was five to two with Dave Miller. I lied. It was Jim Morrill Jr. Look, I picked that up and I picked that up. All I'm impressed. All right, good stuff. <laughs> and number five, Mears Hanover with Matt Kachaley. Nice. Was the 92 third betting choice. And with a call, Jim Bavilia. Mears Hanover gliding up to the front to take the lead from Rock and Cam. Drop Red is pushing on the outside. One more lap inside fourth, followed closely by Rockham. Then a length and a half, two foreclosure pacing six at the end. Four Trumps in powerful mist, about nine off the lead. Up top, Mears Hanover as Drop Red slides into the pocket behind him. The quarter is 26 and two. Mears Hanover was unbeaten on the 5 8 Solval at the Meadows so far this year from third. Here comes Rock and Cam. Fresh off a big win at the Meadowlands. It's the three to five favor with David Miller taking advantage of the straightaway to take over from Mears Hanover. Two back to drop red, a solid performer in this class third. One more lap is fourth to the outside. Rockham is looking for cover following that foreclosure and four trumps inside. Powerful miss the trailer to the half mile marker now 54 and four, 28 and two. Second panel predictably quick fractions up top. It's Rock and Cam leading it now by a link, doing it willingly for Miller. Mears Hanover. Over led earlier now working from the pocket there goes foreclosure he's picking off horses one by one he's third about three lengths off the lead inside drop red saving ground following the live cover for trumps into fifth one more lap inside of him it's still rock and cam at three quarters 121 and 4 27 even third panel have a feeling we're going to see our first sub 150 mile of the meet here rock and cam by about a length outside foreclosure mirrors Hanover still lurking in the pocket at the top of the stretch Rock and Cam. Miller still hasn't gone to the whip. Mears Hanover trying him in the passing lane. Rock and Cam holding tight. Mears Hanover's getting real close. It's Rock and Cam. Mears Hanover. It is oh, oh, too close. Rock and Cam fresh off a of win closing night at the Big M. Just beat Mears Hanover by a sneeze, but he had to go 149 flat in order to do it. That is some serious racehorse time, particularly in the Poconos, particularly at night. Hello. Number four drop red with Georgie Knapp was a non-factor. He was four back in third. And now with the 12th on Saturday from Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs, the lovely Heather. Thank you. We're switching gates now. We've got winners over Trotters, first $25,000. Five horses in this field, but five horses with huge talent. Number four is Beat Goes On Hanover. She's a favorite. She's made half a million dollars. David Miller, Nifty Norman team up again in here. The five is Sand Top Gun. He's been a factor every week. And then number one is Cassis, 12 to 1. Now, last week he didn't fare very well in the slob. Um, other than that, he's been a killer, so the betters have been a little picky with him. Underway, Cassis on the inside, sticks ahead out in front, slight edge on in focus, and now in focus, asserting himself, going to sweep on by here and clear Cassis, who's now second by about a length at the eighth mile marker. It's another length and a half to beat goes on, Hanover third, and yet another length and a half there to Sand Top Gun. Perfect rendition is really hustling, trying to catch the back of the pack, but it's it's going to be a tough job to get back into it from here. They get to the quarter 29 even. Very soft fractions. You have a small field in here, so different strategies at play. In focus. In from the Meadowlands, closing in on the 
million dollars earned in his illustrious career on top for young driver Jimmy Tactor Jr. Cassis with the nice trip for Ray Schnitger. They stay single file through the front stretch now. Beat goes on hand over third. Sand top gun, solid performer in this group is fourth. Perfect rendition has caught the rest, but had to be used hard just to do that. The half is 58 and 1, 29 and 1 second panel, and that's not taxing at all for these top flight trotters. That's good news for in focus. He's just strolling now on the front end, unpressured, unhurried. Cassis is very close in the pocket, getting the good trip here goes beat goes on Hanover he's gonna light this candle first over now for David Miller and put a charge into the leader perfect rendition doing all he can to get back into it fourth sand top gun saves ground three quarters 126 and two much faster on the back 28 and one and beat goes on Hanover suddenly taking over from in focus Cassis gets off there and goes to the outside further back sand top gun fourth just like that beat goes on Hanover dusted in focus who's off stride at the back Cassis now trying him in the passing lane. Beat goes on Hanover and Cassis. They are dead out sprinting to the line. Beat goes on Hanover has enough. You can't keep a good woman down, okay? I'm not calling Dave Miller a woman, all right? The mayor. <laughs> I think the expression is you can't pick, keep a good man down unless I'm mistaken. <laughs> Really? Yeah, really. Oh. <laughs> what do you women want, want to take over everything? Okay, whatever. B goes on <laughs> Hanover. Sashays first up um, down the back stretch. She just trots the girl power away. I'm telling you. 154 and 3 victory. She was awesome this night. She wins by a neck over Cassis, um, who was driven by Ray Schnicker, who happens to be this horse's trainer. And then Sand Top Gun got the show money. Speaking of, of a good woman, Charlotte McBride. She's here to talk with Brandon Simpson, who is a really an up-and-coming driver now on the East Coast. And we found out the scoop on Mr. Simpson. All right, thanks, Heather and Steve. I'm here with driver, owner, and trainer Brandon Simpson. Brandon, what initially got you into this sport? I grew up in it, um, third generation. Uh, my, my grandpa races. He still races, actually. He won a race this year at 82. Oh. Uh, my father races, my uncle, uh, just, a, just the family. So your grandpa won a race at 82. Do you think you'll be doing this when you're 82? I, I don't know. He's pretty tough. Uh, hopefully I'm still watching. I don't know if I still want to be racing at, at 82, but we'll see. Now, what keeps you alive in this sport? What, what makes you want to do this day in and day out? Oh, it's the action. It's definitely hard work. Uh, to train, drive, everything's hard work, but it's just good action. Um, I like the horses. I enjoy the horses. I like the racing. And, um, you know, I, I like the competition. Now, I know you're one of the few in this sport that decided to go to college. Why go to college if you knew you wanted to do this from a young age? Um, my grandma was the dean of a community college, so she always kind of preached to me, you know, at least get your schooling, whatever you want to do, you know, at least get your schooling. So I wanted to back up, so I, I got that done and went from there. And what was your degree in? Uh, business. Okay. Marketing. Marketing. And do you feel like you'll ever use the business marketing doing this now? No. Actually, <laughs> when I was going to college, I managed a restaurant, and I learned more there than I would ever uh, from school. So <laughs> that, was, that was the biggest thing I did was, was managing a restaurant. Now, what kind of goals do you set for yourself in this sport? Um, I just want to survive. I, I enjoy it. I, I want to keep going, hopefully get better every year, and, and uh, just go from there. Nothing big. I, I don't have a lot of big goals I want to set. I just want to do good. All right. Well, we hope you do good. Good luck, and thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Anytime. All right. Back to you guys. Thank you, Charlotte and Brandon Simpson. Now, neither one of them have changed their name, correct? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, they're <laughs> okay. good. When we come back, a lot of action from Sunday right here at Harris, Philadelphia, correct? Yes. Finally, he got it. Don't go away. Cheers. <laughs> we believe in life after work. We believe good times get better in groups. We believe it's not what we do, but what happens when we're together. We believe when one of us wins, we all win. We believe in all-you-can-eat wings. And fresh hot pizza. We believe the louder you cheer, the faster they run. We believe the two's company and three's a trifecta. We believe. We believe. Horses laugh like children when they run. We believe in long shots. We believe that jockeys are giants. And sulkies are chariots. We believe it's always post time somewhere. We believe there's no place like the home stretch. 
We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe that life on the rail is really where it's at. Welcome back to PA Harness Week, along with the lovely Heather Moffitt. I'm the not quite as lovely Steve Ross, but I am sitting next to her, so maybe some of that loveliness will rub off on me. Perfect. Let's go to action right here, as promised. Harris, Philadelphia on Sunday, which was the first day of the new name, correct? That's correct. Okay. Here's the deal. It was a condition base for winners over $25,000 lifetime. Number two, Fashion Delight was Even Money with Dave Miller. Number five, Fancy Free Shark with Tim Teacher was the two to one second choice. And number one, Pedro Island was five to one with Brian Sears. And here's James with that call. The half mile, 55 and two. They straighten away up the back stretch. Fancy Free Shark is still a length and a half in front of the pocket sitting Pedro Island. Fashion Delight's gained to be a joint second facing the breeze. Vertical Horizon is second over wide of Dirty Devil. They're three from the front inside the 5 16 Transcending's got four and a half to come. And two lengths last remains Bad Rusty, six and a half front to back. Fancy Free Shark hit three quarters and a very strong 122 and two 27 seconds in the third quarter and fancy free shark maintains his length and a half advantage pedro islands at a dream pocket trip fashion delights leveling off in the breeze dirty devil dives down to the open stretch nothing from vertical horizon a 16th to go fancy free shark kick clear by two fancy free shark made the top but was never seriously challenged winning by two in 150 and two number eight Dirty Devil, a 45 to 1 bomber with Ron Pierce, was second, and Pedro Allen got third. Now for the co feature on Sunday, here's Heather. That's right, this was exactly the co feature. Winners over Pacers again, the first $30,000. Number five, Better Sweet, first start of the season for him. The fans are really betting him. And speaking of horses making their debut this season, number seven, Dial or No Dial. Oh, one you're, of my you're college horse. Fans. <laughs> horses, okay. Um, he's finally back in action. And then there's number three, Specialty Rocks. He won in the same class last week over a sloppy track. Better Sweet is third over with six lengths to make up, just wide of dial or no dial. And two off last remains Rock in the House through a 56 second half mile, 28 and two the second quarter. They're going to pick it up and with Big Bay Point a length and a quarter in front. Drum Fire holds down pocket position, special T Rocks leveled off in the breeze, two and a quarter from the lead. Andy Ruse locked in, Sir Ziggy Z Tams behind stale cover, four from the front. Better Sweet has five and a half to make up, still wide of dial or no dial. And the trailer from races outside has been rocking the house seven and a half behind big bait point who scoots away three quarters 122 and three quick and they did 26 and three in the third quarter coming to the eighth pole big bait points a length and a half in front specialty rocks is digging back in and specialty rocks is called upon for his best right now and he sticks ahead in front at the 16th specialty rocks kicks clear in the late stages big bait point has the honors of setting off the teletimers now he goes in three quarters 122 and three. That third quarter was in 26 and three. Ooh. Hello. Meanwhile, Specialty Rocks is coming first up, just keeps pacing by. He wins in 150 and one with Daryl Beer in the bike. Daryl is also the trainer on this one. Sir Ziggy's T Zam picked up second. Big Bay Point did hold on for third. And what about Better Sweet? Nothing off the board? Nothing? Not a zilch? What's it to you? Oh, well, next time get on the horse. The horse is a monster. Needed that one, I guarantee you. Okay, stay with us. When we come back, we're going to go in the bike. And this week, we have finally hit a crescendo. All the buildup from Yonkers all these weeks. It's now hit. It's now the time. You're going to see the Levy final and the Matchmaker Blue Chip final. It's coming up next, and so don't even think about going anyplace. And on the outside, foiled again. Is up the challenge for the lead? Welcome, good old Sunday. No love when you don't come. Welcome, son. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to your place in the sun. Welcome to your place. Hi there, welcome back to PA Harness Week along with Heather Moffitt. I'm Steve Ross. 
I'm all excited right now because we've been talking about these matchups for a while. We're saying could foiled again beat real nice who was was looked to be in so unbeatable in the limbs and we talked about see what peelers who hasn't lost this year getting on all with Andrew vet so we're finally going to find out what happens as we go in the bike First up, the $300,000 matchmaker blue chip. This is going to be an exciting heat. Everybody's been had their bated breath waiting for this race to happen. Number two, see with Peelers was the three to five chalk. At two to one was Andrew Vett, who was last year's champion, older mayor. And at five to one was Rocklamation with Yannick Jingra. And here's the call. Halfway home with the blue chip matchmaker, 55 and three. And see you at Peelers controlling it here. See you at Peelers with three eights to go by a length. Rocklamation is right there with her on the outside. Andrewette has clear sailing, gets first crack at CU at Peelers. Two legs back to Fox Valley Sage. Chancy Lady is dropping back. Down on the inside, bottled up is Ginger and Fred. Three deep, Bill Maher Scooter and Western Silk. Three quarters come up. One, 20, three and two. They're on the final turn. And CU at Peelers getting tested tonight by Andrewette. There's nothing between them. In third is Rocklamation and her paramutual partner coming alive now. Ginger and Fred at the top of the stretch. And they've worn down CU at Peelers. Nothing more to give. Between horses Andrewette. Here comes Rocklamation on the outside. Ginger and Fred close to the line. Rocklamation taking over. All right, here's the deal. See you at Peelers. Went right to the front, as she has been doing all year, and was cutting at some very fancy splits. Suddenly, Andrew Vett couldn't wait any longer. Timmy Teacher pulled on the right line, took her to the outside, and those two started dueling. What happens? Andrew Vett puts Siwa Peelers away and looked like she's sailing on to victory. And then Yannick Jingra on Rocklamation, who got a perfect two-hole trip, came out in the lane, went by, and got up by this much. Andrew Vett was huge and a monster, but Rocklamation got the money. Wow. All right, now we're going to check out the boys. This is the Levy final. Now, this is North America's richest harness race so far this season, $455,000. Foiled again. He was the 2009-2010 champ in the series. He's your four to five favorite. Now, he's got an entry mate, and that's Atokia. Foiled again is the eight horse in here, or has the eight hole, and Atokia has a three hole, but of course, when you're watching the race, it's the one and the one A. And then there's number seven, real nice, the 2011 champ. He's come back to this series and racing super. Seeking his third, Levy is foiled again. Real nice, looking for his back-to-back -back Levy championship, sitting the pocket. Here comes a Tokyo and Ron Pierce first up. Outside of blatantly good, the half mile was hot. 55 and 1. One lap to go in the Levy final, and they're all after foiled again. Foiled again. In charge to the back stretch by a length from Real Nice, who's looming in the pocket of the outside. A Tokyo grinding it out third. Suddenly, Fitz's Z Tam is drawn in closer. Blatantly good. Down towards the inside, a bottled up fifth. Artsy in and among rivals six. Strand Hanover. Five lengths from the lead with time ticking away. And Knob Hill High, three quarters come up in 124 on the final turn. Foiled again. Challenged by entry mate Atokia. Real nice towards the inside third. Followed up by Fitz's Z Tam and blatantly good. At the top of the stretch in the Levy final. And the entries battling it out. On the inside, foiled again. And a Tokia run. Pierce. Here's a Tokia. Down on the inside, foiled again. It will be one of these two. Here's the wire. Tight. Trainer Ron Burke gets the win, but not with foiled again. The entry mate, a Tokyo wins. Driven by Ron Pearson, 152. Foiled again, cut the mile, but got nipped by a Tokyo. Right there at the finish line. Real nice to finish third. Shocking that Ron Burke won both big races, right? Shocking. Shocking. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's going to do it for us. Don't forget, today is the first Saturday of May. It's Derby Day. Come out here to Harris, Philadelphia, or Mohegan Sun and Pocono Downs. Bet, have some fun, make some money, okay? And for all of us here at PA Harness Week, including my partner, Heather Moffat, I'm Steve Ross, reminding you to get high on harness. It's only natural. Oh, my God. Explosive matter wins the Colonial easily. Underway. Nice pass outside there.